welcome everyone uh, this is nipun i am the founder and ceo of like minds which is the software that powers community hood community hood is our community of uh, about 1200 uh, odd community builders uh, where we you know try to crowdsource challenges from different community builders and then crowdsource knowledge from different community builders and document them through our events and some of our other properties uh, that we have uh but this format is something which is very very close to my heart which is essentially you know someone who has done uh something uh, really useful and documenting uh them you know the the learnings by themselves and then sharing it with the community i think it's phenomenal uh you know someone putting so much effort like creating a presentation so it's a workshop that we have today and it's a very very special workshop you know a lot of community builders that we speak to uh talk about what are some of the cost effective ways to launch a community uh that he my organization doesn't give me enough budget to to experiment uh, a community uh what is the least amount of money i can start with what are some of the resources that i can explore you know when i'm starting a community with less budget and uh, i think today's workshop is is an answer to all that and we couldn't think of a better person to to sort of conduct that workshop so uh you know without uh, taking a lot of time uh, i would introduce my uh, you know uh, sort of instructor for the workshop uh you know instructor sounds like someone probably you know uh, in in their 30s or 40s maybe but uh in today's world everyone can learn from anyone and uh you know i'm very very happy to have a very very young chap but someone you know uh, who has been in the community space for a while now and someone who has been with global companies right from his college days i remember uh, uh, you know this person i spoke to about i think two or three years back when he had just sort of started like not just like it's, it he had been working with a global company for last one year at that time and uh, i was very very impressed and i think he's sort of done really well in last those two three years uh, so yeah without taking more time i would love to introduce nitesh agarwal uh nitesh agarwal is like i said young but experienced community builder uh, who has built uh, or rather helped uh, startups like your story uh, my lands data quest uh, you know i'm very very excited about this because you are someone who is very young and uh, still has a lot of experience in the community space uh, so yeah would love to you know hand over the stage to you and uh, you know you can take us through your learnings Thank you so much for this uh, long and very humbling introduction, Nepun. Uh, it is a pleasure to be here. As you said, uh, that I have been working uh, with a lot of startups, very young startups, as their first community hire. And um, although I would say, like my intention uh, working at these role uh, roles was not to, you know, build the most the most cost effective community, but it sort of happened. Uh, like by accident because uh once i like my first opportunity i was there as their first community hire and i was the only community professional in that so uh we were working under limited budgets and um and that continued happening with the next opportunity that i kept getting with uh, i was always the first community hire so i sort of developed like very organically and naturally like understood what it takes to build a community um as the first community hire and working with limited resources so that's what i'm going to share with you all today um but but let's start uh, so today uh, as i said i'll be talking to you about building a community with minimum resources this is something that i am uh, excited not just in in terms of community building but also in terms of like life in general i i am a very big believer in the asymmetric power of actions you know little actions that can do uh, amazing uh, an amazing impact and have like uh, a very asymmetrical outcome so that goes to the community building space as well uh, and i am nitesh uh, i'm the host of beginner maps podcast and i'm also a coach uh, where i help other people start their communities at my first community manager so um without further ado let's start the presentation and uh, the first thing that i want to talk about uh, before i talk about the community building tactics is just align on what community is so um 
when we think of community we think of community uh probably the first thing we think of is community platform like uh, a place like discord or even uh like mind where people you know gather and uh, like it's a it's a big place and it's a it has all of these features um but uh and, and organizes a lot of the uh events like this one but the thing that most people don't uh realize about communities is that your platform is not your community all the events that you do they do not build a community all the messages all the um i don't know engagement tactics engagement strategies programs that you put in like they're not community and um they may help in building a community but they're not community themselves so what is a community community is uh something that exists in the relationship between people so um if if people that are in your community they don't have relationships amongst each other then you don't have a community that is that is like the clear way of identifying a community now uh this is uh like there's also the the best way to differentiate between an audience and a community so um a lot of people on instagram say that we have a community of a uh, million followers but that's you know that doesn't really make sense when you get into the um i guess the technicality or the definition of what community is so i i created this uh this little uh diagram to explain this and make it really clear um you can thank me for my uh, appreciate me for my drawings later on but um a community as you can see is a uh, built between relationships between people um and whenever you're starting a new community um the idea and the um the only thing that you can do uh if you're building a good community is to facilitate connections between people who otherwise would not have connected like that is you know that is when you will know that you are fulfilling a need in the market so looking from the business angle so just like uh, a new product or a new uh, startup tries to fulfill a need from the uh, market a community fulfills the need of connection and uh, a need of belonging between people who do not have it so um I actually uh, take like a lot of inspiration of community building from startup advice so uh, y combinator has a famous uh, quote or a famous graph uh, for you know how how good your startup is and they say that like you need to focus like in your early days you should focus on the intensity of like more than the number of users so they say that it's not good to have a million users who just sort of like your product but it's great to have just 100 users who love your product and i think that's the true that's true even for communities so um sorry yeah so for communities it is even more true uh it needs to solve the problem of belonging and when you're starting you need to solve it really really well for just like a handful of people start with 10 go to 100 but you need to make sure that those people really love your community because ultimately community uh versus product like the difference between a product and community is that the entire value that people get from a community is is from other people so unlike the product where the product in itself has a lot of value community does not like the 100% of the value is in the people that you get to interact with so you need to focus on making sure that your earliest community members are uh really into your community now uh i i want to talk about like we're all trying to build a business around community here and that's the kind of communities that we're trying to uh you know um learn how to engage so uh where's the money in this i i refer to this amazing book by david swing so you all probably know of this uh but if you don't um just grab this it has been a game changer for me um but uh this book is actually the book that showed me how community can uh can be a uh, an asset to a business and not a cost but uh, an asset that helps them uh empower every aspect of their business and uh i i've got three examples for you here on how communities can uh bring in revenue to the business so uh the first is like community itself can be a paid product so i'm going to take the example of this uh 
this community uh this is lenny richeski's uh community so lenny richeski is a guy who started uh this substack newsletter to almost two years ago i think maybe three years now and um he writes about product uh management and uh building products so uh really popular newsletter he got like uh I don't know a uh, hundred so uh, tens of thousands of subscribers for it and uh, he has a paid version of the newsletter now um what he sells along with just like he doesn't just sell um access to the newsletter but uh, he also sells access to a private slack community with this newsletter and this slack community now has 10000 plus people in it and they're really active and um this has become like a major reason for people to buy a subscription for Lenny's premium version of the newsletter so uh example this is example number 1 of how community can directly impact your bottom line example number 2 is it helps you improve retention by adding an emotional layer to your offering now this is something that i uh, saw with um with my with my first job at data quest so we were building a an ad tech platform that allowed people to learn data science skills but there are a lot of com- uh, competitors out there who are building it so the uh, the number one um value that our community added was it 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 became the uh, you know the one of our competitive advantages when compared to other uh, players in the market none of the other players had a community that was as engaged as ours was so um this meant that when a com- uh, a customer was purchasing access to data quest they were also getting access to this really awesome community that was not there with the other competitors and now uh, like this awesome community it kept getting better because engagement leads to more engagement so uh, i i see a lot of design principles that people go wrong with when they're starting a new community that i have fixed in almost every uh, company that i uh, went to uh, when their uh, first when i went as their first community yes, hire um so what people don't realize uh, when they're designing their community is that more channels or more spaces do not lead to more engagement so um you you probably a part of uh, i don't know if you're interested in communities i think like every one of you must be part of some community and um like just think uh, how many channels are there in that community and do you really care about the number of channels in that community the answer is probably no nobody cares about the number of channels that are there in the community. that is not the metric that anybody thinks of when they're judging how good or how bad a community is so um so what should uh, what do these channels lead to often times uh, new people who are starting communities they they've got like more channels that they uh, than they than they should and this leads to confusion when a member tries to post a message should i post it in channel number a or should i post it in channel number b uh it gets new members overwhelmed because now they don't know where to go they can obviously not uh, go into each and every channel but um they don't know if uh, the uh, like the went to the first two channels and it's it was kind of empty and they're like should i go to the third one would that be better um or am i just wasting my time and uh members also start missing relevant posts so again if you have a channel that uh, talks about dogs and then another one that had a, has a like that talks about pets in general what happens is that somebody might uh you know post their dog picture in the pets channel and um somebody who really wanted to look at a dog picture today they'll go into the dog channel and they won't find dog picture there so it you know just a silly example to uh, uh just holding the uh, idea that having like more channels is probably more harmful than uh, you know uh, useful so i've got three principles for uh, that from for designing and architecting your community spaces and the uh, the channels or the spaces uh, however uh, the platform um has designed it like calls it uh, so those three principles are first one less is more this is what i've been talking all the while uh, but having less channels actually leads to more engagement um and more channels like it's almost inversely proportional so remember this less is more 
um second is you need to have channels with non overlapping scopes now uh, in the dogs and the pets example that i was talking about earlier like it it's uh, it was uh, it was not good because the dogs and the pets they have got overlapping scopes now uh, what what might have been better is like if there was a dog channel and maybe uh, a non dog channel so i don't know that's like still bad example but um you want to have channels that do not uh, overlap in their scopes and uh, finally you still want the entire space to have comprehensive so i mean if you've got a channel for uh, if you've got a community of pet owners and there's a dog channel and a cat channel uh, but you're getting people who've got um, i don't know hamsters as their pets they won't know where to go because it's like there's no space for them so you want to be sure that there's space for everybody uh, who wants to talk about like their uh like whatever the scope of your community is you need to make sure that the channels are comprehensive in nature so um that is like uh the three design principles that i go with and i've uh, you know uh, whenever i go to a company that has uh like uh, you know 50 plus channels these are the three that i come back to and i start thinking about uh, every channel from these this uh, three lens like does it need to be here uh if not then it it goes like it uh, gets deleted then uh, is there another channel that has a uh, overlapping scope from for this channel and fix that and finally the thing to see is if all the channels together um they comprehensively cover like what the community is talking about and um yeah you can uh, uh like customer feedback is a good way to keep a pulse on whether you're doing it uh, right or wrong but um okay um now i want to talk about uh, the new member onboarding experience again on the theme of uh using minimum resources to creating an engaged community the new member onboarding experience is the number uh, two thing that you should keep in mind the first was uh, having a good community architecture and then the second is the new member onboarding experience now um this is because the most critical part of your community members life cycle is the first 7 days now for that this is, i'm speaking in terms of uh, how important it is for you as the community builder or the community manager why because of three reasons i'll get into them uh, now uh, so the third reason i'll i'll go uh, from the last to the most least important to the most important actually they're all important but the third obvious reason is that this is when your community is top of their mind um they have just joined you uh i guess we all uh, like think back to the time when you joined a community a new community like were you excited about the prospect of being in front of new people or um you know just anticipating uh, what whatever it good it can come uh, from being in this community now uh in the first 7 days you have this top, being top of your mind uh, energy with you so this is a great time for you to get them engaged in the community the second reason is again they are excited about en- engaging we all know that um you know when you go to a party let's say like an in person a party you uh, and uh, you know maybe you don't know a lot of people there but as you're walking in the door like your energy is high as compared to what it would be like 30 minutes late uh, later when you have been there and not talked to anybody like you probably want to just go back home and uh, you have probably decided that this is not the space for you so um again in the first 7 days you need to uh, use this excitement to your advantage but the number one reason why the first 7 days are most critical is because you either make it a habit for that new member to visit your community in the first 7 days or they forget about it what do i mean by that let me uh, show you a few example like a few communities that i am a part of this is this is the list of those few communities this is like a screenshot from my bookmarks tab and um these are all the communities that i am part of that i am uh, really you know have been excited about participating in now uh this is in addition to all of the other places that i meet new people that is your linkedin twitter reddit whatsapp or even instagram 
now that's a lot of places that i have so if i'm going to join a new community like that community builder they have a lot of competition uh, for my attention these uh, they are competing essentially with all of these communities that uh, that are there and this is probably uh, the case for your members as well maybe maybe they're not part of so many communities i'm pretty not but um they they they're part of all of these uh, social media channels uh, probably and at least a few other communities so um you that's why that's the number one reason why the first seven day of the member uh, experience is like you have to invest in that just do everything that you can to engage your community members in your in their first seven days now um how how do you do that uh i've got two like there are uh two strategies for that the first is to create educational content the second is to create networking opportunities for educational content i've got the strategy of hiring uh hiding a golden key inside your community this is the like the golden key metaphor that i've used from like you know games uh there's a golden key and your member uh will go through a lot of trouble to uh find and grab that golden key these golden keys can be any uh you know um courses or uh an archive of tips and tricks or uh past webinar recordings whatever it is like those are really golden they're like delicious for a new member and uh it solves a problem for them so they will go in and you know wade their way around like a new community because it's it's a challenge to familiarize yourself with a new community especially if you're uh using like a non traditional platform like slack um so if if you're using a new platform and your one of the challenges is that new members may not be familiar with that platform you need a golden key that is there like in one of the channels or somewhere in that uh community and uh you need to communicate to every new member that hey we put this thing in this community so go in and grab it once they do it like they'll that's that's a good way to uh engage them they they have received value and uh it it becomes uh, they become hooked the second thing that i mentioned was networking opportunities um again there are a lot of uh, ways you can do that uh i've written three uh, popular ones here so make them introduce themselves give them or tell them how to introduce and give them a reason to introduce themselves by giving them a warm welcome so members can um feel like yeah their introduction was did not go into the ether and um there was actually something happening from them in the introduction um invite them to your live events where they can actually meet strangers um even like go out of your way to um introduce them to uh, like at least one other person from the community that they don't know and um they should meet so uh do this uh, using live events or uh maybe a one on one matching program if you have it for your community um if you're able to do both of these things um i think you'll be in a pretty good spot for uh having an engaged uh new member experience now the third most impactful thing that you can do for your community is the super user program super users are the top members of your community and having a thoughtfully designed super user program can go a long way into helping you scale your community um i'll, I'll uh, tell you about some of the ways and um just uh, some things that you can do to create uh, this engaging super user program now um super user program is actually the least expensive way to solve your engagement problem now what do i mean by uh, what am i comparing to when i say least expensive i'm comparing to you hiring a full time community professional now um i uh, i have worked as uh, the first like community professional at a lot of companies so um i'm probably uh, giving advice that is uh you know that does not bode well for my own financial career in building communities but i this is the truth that i've discovered um like let's just compare hiring a community manager versus investing in your super user program so a full time community manager 
can cost anywhere between three thousand dollars to eight thousand dollars per month. A super user program, it's all flexible. You can invest uh, uh, into rewarding your super users, like any anywhere between, like anything as little as I don't know whatever uh, is work uh, works for you. Like I've written two hundred dollars here, but um, depending on your community, it may be a little less or a little more. But uh, you get the idea. For uh, it, it can start at a few hundred dollars. Um, the second difference is that it can be really difficult to find a community manager that is also aligned with your community's mission. Um, but when you're investing your super user programs, uh, like all of your super users, they're already aligned with the mission of your community. Uh, if your community is around sustainability, then people who are uh, in your community they already care about the. Uh, the the mission for your community. So by rewarding them, you you are rewarding uh, people who are already invested in your mission. Uh, now again, for this reason, like a community manager hiring a community manager, it can obviously be a hit or a miss, and it's a uh, it's a uh, it's an investment, and there are risks associated with it. But with a super user program, like even <laughs> even if it's uh, not like even if it's not successful at creating engagement. The worst case scenario is that you've created some excitement in your community and uh, rewarded some of your top members for doing good things for the community. It's not that bad. So, um, what uh, do you need to do, like, uh, in order to build a super user program? Once again, I've got three things, like three steps for this. Um, like, I, I love the number three. I don't know why, but um, I've got three steps for. Uh, uh, essential that are essential for creating a good super user program. The first one is to identify your super users. How do you identify your super users? The best way to do it, or the easiest way to do it, would be if you just have a post that said, "Hey, this is our super user program. This is what we are expecting, and this is what we get." And you just have a lot of people just uh, uh, inbound requests coming uh, for people who want to participate and be your super users. That is great, but um, when you're starting out, and especially if you've got a new community going on, you'll probably have to resort more towards outbound reach out. That means um, if you have people in the community who are engaging, and you see them uh, uh, potential a potential in them to uh, you know level up and uh, a desire to level up in the community, then you can just reach out to them. And uh, invite them into your super user program, uh, and this is probably what you're going to have to rely on more towards the uh, uh, beginning of your super user program. But uh, as you as it as it uh, becomes more and more, uh, uh, I guess, popular within your community, you can rest, and you'll get a lot of inbound requests from it. So that's the identity uh, identifying part. The second part is to Incentivize your super users. Um, so, how do you invest your? Uh, so, I, I mentioned here that you can invest up to two hundred, uh, starting anywhere from a few hundred dollars into your super user program. This is all going towards incentivizing your super users. But how do you invest it? Um, there are a few, like lots of uh, ideas that uh, that are popular. Uh, so, you can you can have a competition with a grand prize, and the competition is. Uh, about something that your people care about, maybe um, maybe it's uh, for uh, I don't know writing an article or the maximum number of people who who post some kind of a thing that drives up engagement for your community. You can post it uh, in terms of a competition, and you have outsized returns. You can invest in swag for your users. Send them T-shirts, mugs, or um, I don't know any other uh, um, swag that you want. Uh, to your uh, top members, and it will be a good investment because those are the people that actually care about your uh, community and your company. You can invest it in compensating and hiring like good speakers, great speakers for your workshops. Uh, just hire people that your uh, your members want to hear from and who they look up to. You can use it for compensating writers uh, to create like a. A good uh, blog or uh, an internal, uh, I don't know, uh, an internal space where people can get ideas and tips and tricks. Uh, you can use it for a moderator program. So if you have a community that is uh, like very large and 
there's a lot of conversation happening that needs to be moderated just invest uh, invest it into um compensating some of your moderators for it um but but just uh like i want to uh, share like one very important caveat uh, when you're thinking about investing money into your super user program which is uh that your best members won't be motivated by money the people who want to really be a part of your community and level up in your community they they're not in it for the money uh and if they're for the in it for the money if the, that's like the number one thing that they care uh, care about they probably like not a good super user honestly so uh those top members top super users they're more motivated by internal motivating factors like the opportunity to network and uh, improve their reputation amongst uh, like minded people or maybe uh, they've got a complimentary service or a product that they they're actively trying to market and uh, these uh, like when you're designing your super user program you need to be very careful uh, into making sure that you don't just highlight the um, money part of uh, you know um, Uh, being a super user you also highlight these benefits and actually make sure that these benefits do exist um make sure that your super users get um like at least a few of these benefits along with the money that uh you invest into the program um the uh that's what i uh, just said so complement the internal motivators with external motivators uh this is a line from uh david spinks uh, from his book uh, just stealing it and putting it over here um and then uh the final thing is to manage those super users now uh, once you've like you've identified your super users you have a program there uh you've got um you know rewards going out and all of that you that's not where your job ends you also need to manage your super users you need to make sure that they are uh, like their their needs are being taken care of their you know um if they are engaged or if they are doing great work then you recognize it if they're not then you probably need to talk to them and if there's something else they need or um if they're just not interested in being a super user anymore if that's the case then you need to be uh, proactive about uh, removing them from your super user program or um just make sure when you're uh, thinking about it that there's a good bit of uh, uh, you know management that goes into a super user program it's not a set it and forget it type of a thing and um like for the final like thing i want to leave you with this uh this really amazing uh presentation from Laura Nestler uh, who was the ex head of community at Duolingo now we be a community at Reddit um this is a framework that uh you've probably uh seen uh, online but if you're not like this is something that has stuck with me and i uh, like i go back to a lot of times uh, so that's why i wanted to uh, share it here only 1% of your members are going to create the content and uh, they will be the people who get the other 9% to uh, interact with your content but uh, remember that uh, like 90% of your community members will not engage in the community um there are uh, you know it's just a statistic that is what uh, you've seen across like hundreds thousands of communities but um this is how uh, you should set your expectations when it comes to uh, a community and um make sure like this also shows how important it is to focus on this top 1% uh, this is what we were doing with the um the super user program but uh this graph just uh, i i feel like this 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 graphic makes it super clear uh at least for me um yeah and focus on the creators the lurkers will come uh this is the mantra the one liner that's that's me uh you can find me on itch.com you can go to beginnermaps.com uh to listen to the podcast that i do with community professionals and talk about their careers and my first community manager.com for my consultancy Yeah awesome thank you so much Nitesh and I am probably going to sync up again one on one you know have a chat on some of the onboarding principles that you use and we use and I am sure we could probably carve out another session for these guys <laughs> <laughs> Yeah definitely